Democrat. No, I'm not a Democrat. I don't affiliate myself with the Democratic Party, who's so far left, who basically wants the government to take over health care, which we cannot afford, the government to give free college to everybody, and the government to give everyone a job, which basically is $40 trillion on the balance sheet of $21.5 trillion. We can't afford it. Joining me now is Republican strategist Evan Siegfried, and Jonathan Capehart is back with me. So, uh, uh, Evan, my sort of working theory of what's happening with Howard Schultz is that his candidacy is sort of a threat. Um, you, you know, you've had never, never Trump Republicans like Steve Schmidt, who's been one of the most eloquent um, people in describing what Donald Trump has done to the presidency and to the country. Um, but people like Steve, who don't feel comfortable in the Republican Party, and who don't necessarily feel comfortable in the Democratic Party over certain policies would very much love to kind of force the Democrats to nominate somebody they would like, somebody that they wouldn't mind voting for. And to sort of kind of say, you know, you can do what you want, but if you nominate Elizabeth Warren, we'd rather have Trump. He gives us tax cuts. Sort of backing up my theory. Vanity Fair has a, a piece that talks about he's a Mr. Burns foil, calling Steve Schmidt a Mr. Burns. And here's the question they have about somebody like Mr. Schmidt, uh, Steve Schmidt. Is it possible that he has a more realistic political game in mind to, in addition to a generous paycheck, if the, pre, if the pre-Trump Republican Party can't be resurrected, maybe the threat of Schultz can por- push the Democrats to nominate a more middle-of-the-road candidate? The only candidate that Republicans who opposed Donald Trump in 2016 are talking about for the presidential election and challenging Trump and somebody who would reflect our values is Larry Hogan. But they Second. know he has no chance. Larry but Hogan that would no be chance. in the primaries. And no we chance. know that an independent candidate like Howard Schultz would hand re-election to Donald Trump. Steve Schmidt has caught greenitis, which means he's looking at dollar signs, not the well-being of the country. But let, hold on a second. Before, before we, you know, and, and I, you know, I, I don't purport to know Steve well, just as a colleague here, but Steve Schmidt genuinely loathes, in my estimation, Donald Trump, okay? But, and, and, I, and I get the sense when I talk to him and other never-Trump Republicans that I know, that they would love to see their party reborn as a new party. The easiest vehicle to do that would be to have a third party sort of turn their old party into the Whigs. And there are two ways that can happen, right? Either the Democrats become more of a Republican party that they like, and then they feel comfortable in it, or there's another party they can go to. This, this feels more like that. Of course, they're all going to make a lot of money. But th- this also feels like that. Like This is a way to either make a new Republican party for ourselves or just force the Democrats to nominate somebody we like. It, 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 it can't just be as crass as money. Listen, we're not going to change the Democratic Party as Republicans. Then, then this is it, a way to make another party, no, right? And looking at the other party, there are practical and logistical issues here. You have to get ballot access to all 50 states. If you're a billionaire, you can. You can buy it's it. It's going to be tough. And at the same time, you have to have a constituency. And what what state does Howard Schultz, if he were to run, put in his column immediately? None. Right. Look at his approval ratings right now. 4% among Democrats, 4% among independents, 4% among Republicans. Yeah. Everybody hates Howard Schultz. So I don't think there's anything for him to do here. His book isn't even in the top 25 on Amazon. If you read the reviews, there are people angry at him because of this and angry at him because he moved the Seattle Supersonics. I mean, it's just yeah. the man is more loathed than the flu right now. <laughs> so well, I think it's a, a you, fool's errand to even consider him as a serious person. Yes, he could take away votes and spoil the election. Yeah. But he's certainly not somebody that the anti-Trump forces in the Republican Party are backing. Yeah. We think he's a joke. And if he did that, Jonathan K part, he would keep his tax cuts. Let's just be honest. Howard Schultz, it seems to me, would rather have his tax cuts, right, than have Elizabeth Warren be be president. And and you know who does love Howard Schultz right now? Dunkin' Donuts. Because a lot of people are saying, you know, they're taking out their anger on Starbucks, too. Uh, But let me me play a a little bit of just to give Evan credit for what he's saying. There doesn't seem to be a, a yearning for Howard Schultz. There seems to be this. Here is a heckler going after Howard Schultz. I wanted to clarify the word independent, which I view uh, merely as a designation on the ballot. Don't help elect Trump, you egotistical billionaire ass. Jonathan, after that, you know what I saw all over my Twitter feed? Heckler 2020. (laughs) <laughs> like people wanted the heckler to be president. Uh, Sherrod Brown, who may run for president, called him a total idiot. I mean, there, there is no boomlet for him. There is no constituency other than Republicans who want either to control the Democratic nominee or to have Donald Trump back and keep the tax cuts. Am I wrong? 
I, I, I'm hard pressed to argue against your your theory there, Joy. You know, if How, Howard Schultz has been rumored to be considering running for president for a for a long time now, to the point where people who knew him as a Democrat were assuming he was going to run for president within the Democratic Party. The person we saw in on 60 Minutes on Morning Joe is someone who I don't even recognize. I mean, I was the, the MC at the NAACP Legal and Educational Defense Fund dinner where Howard Schultz in 2017 won the National Justice Award, who gave this very inspiring speech about his rags to riches upbringing, his commitment to, to social justice, his work um, after, I'm uh, not after Charlottesville, after Ferguson, doing quietly doing town halls in his stores around the country to give his employees an opportunity to talk about race and healing and understanding. That person completely disappeared on the set where you're sitting right now when it was when it was morning joe sounding more like a sort of republican automaton than a you know unabashed democrat who's now turned around to bash other democrats yeah. i have no problem with billionaires running for office full disclosure i worked for mike Bloom bloomberg on his first a campaign for mayor at a time when all my friends thought I was absolutely bananas to go work for this guy who everyone said wasn't going to win, was a bored billionaire looking for something else to do. Twelve years in office of mayor, as mayor of New York City, you can argue about specific policies that he instituted as mayor, but there's no way you can say that he did not do a good job running New York City. Right. Having, him in the, having him run for president in the Democratic Party is going to make the field better, is going to make the, the, the argument better among Democrats why the nation should put them in charge. What Howard Schultz is doing is really reprehensible, is too strong a word, but I guarantee you, if he had announced that he was running for president in the Democratic Party, his standing within the party, within the country, his reputation would be intact instead of being in tatters the way it is right now. Yeah, but he, that he wants his money. I mean, people love money, and he wants his tax cuts. I, I, we, we, have, we have to cut the segment short because we actually have some breaking news coming up. But very quickly, Evan, um, if Schultz runs, what percentage, you're the numbers guy here, what percentage of the vote would he get? Well, I don't know. If we're going by Twitter, he's getting ratioed for every tweet, and it's turned yeah. into a verb where if you get ratioed, you get Schultz. I think he gets maybe 2%. Yes, he could shift a Michigan or a Wisconsin again, yeah. be that spoiler. But Howard Schultz is not loved except for maybe two to three And becoming people. the new Ralph Nader uh, or, or Jill Stein or other people who are seen as spoilers, not good for your rep. Uh, Evan Siegfried, thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks. you. Come back soon. Jonathan will be uh, back with us. And next up, the latest breaking news out of Virginia.